going on dudes and dudettes no it's been a while but finally back had some time now i know it's been like this is about two weeks of information so hopefully it's not enough but most of you guys or girls just watch the first couple seconds i see my my analytics but it's all good that's why i put the some of the dumb stuff at the beginning of the video to give you somewhat of entertainment but we'll get into the crap real quick as far as any of the big news so Yes, the USC athletic director, Lynn Swan, had finally decided to resign the other day, which I don't mind because he really wasn't doing that good of a job and there's just a bunch of crap going on at USC anyway, so it was inevitable. Uh, we'll talk about the, who I think should replace him a little bit later in the video. I don't really have that much experience to choosing athletic directors or thinking about them as much, but I have a guy who might be able to fix the problems if he's willing to do it <clears throat> and not do coaching, in my opinion, but we'll see how that goes. But yes, a couple weeks ago, USC did get the W against Stanford, which is really cool, but it's kind of not surprising. They've kind of been doing this winning against Stanford who, or the Stanford series it's whoever is at home ends up winning so I wasn't as surprised I was just surprised about how much it was the 45 to 20 which I liked but that's what I'm kind of hoping for the magic coming up tonight against Utah it's kind of been the same thing whoever's home the home team usually wins and USC barely got the win by one point because Utah tried to go for two two years ago but still win, but we'll see how that goes. And, and I'll talk about the future of Clay Helen, especially if he ends up losing that game and how he loses that game, but it should be very interesting once that sort of crap comes up. But first week of the Chargers, they did get the W in overtime against the Colts, barely. Austin Eckler had a crazy game. The second string running back, even though Melvin Gordon's still out. But yeah, it was okay. I hated that it was overtime, but of course, the shortcomings of Phil Rivers, my favorite quarterback. Can't wait till they're finally off him, but I might not be liking one NFL team at that point when they finally decide to, but hopefully it's sooner rather than later. And they did get, in their week two game, they did lose to my brother's Detroit Lions, so congrats to him, but freaking the Chargers missed like 17 to 20 points themselves where they should have won that game handily, but that's just the Chargers. And of course, Rivers had to throw an interception to end the game. Just saying, people. But because of that game, Hunter Henry, their star tight end, is out for another six to eight weeks, which sucks because not only is he on my fantasy team, but because he's pretty much the only top tight end that the Chargers have. So they're kind of left with two guys that aren't really that good. So we'll see how that turns out. But also, USC transfer news for the football team. Devin Williams, the pretty highly talented guy coming out of I want to say it was Palmdale or Lancaster, some pretty close places that is in my past history where I used to live. But he did choose USC over Oregon, but I think he just saw the right in the wall that he wasn't becoming any better and he kind of let less talented players behind him go up ahead of him and get more playing time and more plays and more catches throughout like the first three games so far. So he decided to put his name in the transfer portal. Hasn't really decided where he's going yet. So he's, I guess he's still officially on the team somehow. But <clears throat> I'd still say it's not looking good for him, especially at the wide receiver position because both Kyle Ford and Brew McCoy, whether it's this year or next year, they're both gonna be there. And it's like, there's already not enough room no matter what type of offense they use. I believe he was an athlete, so I don't understand why he doesn't try something on the defensive side which is where USC needs a lot of help but I guess he doesn't want to do that but yes that's the stuff we're dealing with so far and yes one of the top defensive players in my opinion Jalen Ramsey had said he wanted a trade from the Jags and everybody including Derwin James one of my favorite players on the Chargers has been wanting him to come to the Chargers anyways because they used to be teammates at Florida State but Jalen Ramsey was pretty much a guy that the Chargers would have drafted if Joey Bosa wasn't there that year. So it would be pretty amazing to have those two top five players in that draft on the same team, along with Derwin James whenever he gets healthy. But Jacksonville's looking for quite a bit in return when it comes to draft picks. And the Chargers are usually pretty stingy about giving those up, but 
to get a guy like that, I think you just gotta do it because he's a game changer, really. Nothing could go wrong there, but yes, hopefully the Chargers do something good because they're missing a lot of spots and they need to make some trades going on right now with the type of injuries they have. But then it was announced a week or two ago, I'm not sure that the Hella Mega Tour is happening with some of my favorite bands, Green Day, Fall Out Boy, and Weezer. Kind of surprised with the Fall Out Boy and it's kind of weird that they're announcing this now even though it's going to happen next summer which is kind of weird but i i don't know if you're talking about like when it comes to pure rock especially in the 90s yeah green day and weezer they've been pretty much going on since then but Bella boy obviously came a lot later and even nowadays they don't even really sound like a rock band not even punk rock anymore so it's kind of weird that they're on there but i'm pretty sure it's just more publicity they weren't going to add another top 90s band like a Blink-182 who isn't up to their full members from before or even like a Yellow Card who's not a band anymore or like even a Newfound Glory because they're always busy doing their own stuff but I think those would have been better more appropriate choices instead of Fall Out Boy but I still have never seen any of those guys in concert so maybe it would be something to look forward to in the future but Tickets are already on sale now. They're probably gonna be sold out. So I don't care whether I do go or not. It's not that important, but we'll see what happens coming up in the summer of 2020, hopefully. And of course, I can't believe I forgot this topic off the top, but yes, Duke basketball did get another five-star recruit in DJ Stewart. Obviously a five-star player, so he's, I think he was ranked in the top 25 of all the players coming into college next year. So it's pretty cool there we had Jalen Johnson and Jeremy Roach for that class. And of course, since most of these guys are probably leave that are coming in this year, uh, Duke is probably gonna add on like two or three more guys hopefully five star guys just to keep them relevant but we'll see how this goes should be very interesting to see who they end up picking up as well and then also some duke news zion williamson's uh, lawsuit has finally kind of come to an end because the school and pretty much basically everybody has did their investigating and found out that he did not accept any money or anything like that from that agent or whatever his family didn't so i guess he's acquitted for now but we'll see if this ends up getting dragged along a lot longer hopefully not then a little bit of trey jones news so he said the main reason why he wanted to come back was to win a national title hopefully that's what happens this year he's definitely a good enough player to have left this season to the nba would have been a first round pick but really happy that he came back fix up his a lot of his injury issues and hopefully he's going to become a better consistent shooter because he was a very good scorer in high school so hopefully he can take that to the next level this year in college then also some other type of news with him that both or i guess the trio of captains for the duke basketball season coming up for them is trey jones javin delorier and jack white both seniors on the team and Trey Jones, the lonely sophomore, but good to see them all. It's a pretty much obvious choices, but Trey Jones is definitely gonna be the leader of that team. The other two guys are kind of in and out of the rotation a lot, so I don't expect them to do much points-wise or defensive-wise, but hopefully keeping these guys together, all these young guys, and getting them to that freaking national championship game that we haven't been to since 2015, I believe, so definitely waiting for that. So Lakers free agency news, as far as the year 2021, they, they're saying that Giannis Antetokounmpo has to be their top priority in that summer when he's a free agent. To me, he's a great athletic player. He does get away with a lot of freaking travels, in my opinion, but so do a lot of like the main stars. But Technically, technically a lot of NBA players get away with travels nowadays, but I just think since he hasn't really had a consistent mid-range jumper and a consistent three-point shot, it's kind of like 
I prefer some other type of players who pass a bit more and rebound a bit more like a Ben Simmons who is kind of in that area but over the summer Ben Simmons has been getting a lot better at shooting so we'll see how he turns out this NBA season but yeah Giannis I don't think they really need a plan for that unless he's built up those shots by then and definitely try to make a run for him see what can happen then also Lakers news they did they were granted that 1.75 million dollar exception for an injury because of DeMarcus Cousins so <clears throat> at some point they could add anybody on their roster for just that amount of money they don't have to give them more or less but it's pretty cool they have that in their back pocket of course people are saying to give it to Carmelo but you just never know what's going to happen a little bit later who's going to be available so I think just waiting till after all-star break to see what's out there especially if Iguodala gets released then he could save it for him in my opinion but ex USC Trojans power forward Chemezi Metu is doing really well for his Nigerian national basketball team and he's leading them he did pretty good he even led them to a spot in next year's Olympics which is pretty awesome for them so congrats to him hopefully he does take that to the next level and get some playing time for the San Antonio Spurs but we'll wait and see then the Chargers signed Lance Kedricks as a tight end because like how I mentioned Hunter Henry is out for a certain amount of time so decided to sign that guy I don't know he's not really that great of a tight end there's a lot better options and probably could have traded for a tight end in my opinion but we'll see what else he has left he's been in the league for quite a bit Quick Chargers news, so Adrian Phillips, sadly, another injury for the Chargers freaking defense. He broke his arm in that Detroit Lions game, so it's gonna be out for a certain amount of time. That's why I think they need to get going on this Jalen Ramsey trade, because he could cover your corner spot and have some of those other guys to go play at that safety position, in my opinion, but like I always say, you're gonna have to wait and see. I just wish they would make moves now instead of waiting and then their record being bad and then trying to fight for the playoffs mid to late season and then barely miss it and not have a good draft pick in the end, which always sucks, but that's how the Chargers always go. And that's why they're retarded, in my opinion. But yes, a lot of that. And then <clears throat> as you see from that graphic I put together, Chargers did make a lot of moves at one point this week so you could read all that stuff too many names to remember but they also did sign a cornerback in Dante Johnson who was recently with the 49ers so we'll see if he can still make it on the team or not but a lot of Melvin Gordon stuff coming out where he said he is going to report officially in week six or eight because either way he'd have to report by the 10th week for the Chargers so he's already Focusing on reporting earlier, which would be good no matter what, but he could still hold out for the 10th of the week. So I'm not really looking forward to him showing up that early, but all we could do is hope. But he did sign with Clutch Sports, which a lot of LeBron James's team and uh, friends run, who obviously have LeBron James and Anthony Davis on their squad. They mostly deal with basketball players, but they're trying to poach the agent of Melvin Gordon and get him onto Clutch, and Clutch usually, like the Anthony Davis situation, got him to the team he wanted to. So if he can't make a deal with the Chargers, then hopefully they'll be able to make a deal with somebody else, and the Chargers would hopefully accept it, but you already saw how the Philadelphia Eagles situation went before the season started. But yeah, and he also came out with another quick uh, comment saying that he's going to play and he hopes to play somewhere into the, in this season, but I don't know. I am kind of over it. He can help us, yeah, but uh, like I always say, the Chargers always end up falling because of Phillip Rivers and his shortcomings, and they're gonna have to deal with that anyways. And having, having Melvin Gordon there doesn't really fix your offensive line. You still need to make trades, I think, <clears throat> to bolster that, but like I always say, we're gonna have to wait and see.
I'm kind of, I guess the most typical millennial type of thing is to not be able to focus on most things, but as I'm making this video, I am trying to finish up Ex Machina. It's been out for a bit, but I never watched it before. It's actually pretty trippy, but yes, not not that bad of a movie. Tom Hall Gleason, Oscar Isaac, Alicia Vikander, so it's pretty cool. It's about to end right now, but let's actually end this video. Or as my family from Peru likes to say, the Deo. And yes, USC had a lot of crap this past two weeks, so I had to write it down, obviously. But Keaton Slovis, he broke a freshman passing record for yards against Stanford, which is really cool. You know, first time officially starting, he did play two quarters in the game against Fresno State, but they didn't really let him do his thing. And when they kind of did in the second half of the Stanford game, he showed why he was pretty darn good and over 300 yards and two touchdowns. So pretty solid for being a three-star guy. And because of that performance against Stanford, USC jumped to number 24 in the country in the top 25, which was really cool. But <clears throat> obviously since the overtime loss to BYU only lasted a week. So I'm pretty sure they're on the outside. They're probably in the 30s or something like that in my opinion but being a, a top 10 team in Utah could probably get them in the conversation to be right out of the top 25 or maybe get some votes in and then the next week if you do win but it would be a tough game against another ranked opponent in Washington at Washington that'd be tough but then they'll have a bye week finally but then they have to go and freaking play on the road at Notre Dame so yes it's a really tough schedule for USC and I can imagine that if any of these games that Clay Helton loses and loses big time, he'll probably be gone, but we'll get into that obviously a little bit later. Then Juju Smith broke a record, ex-USC wide receiver in the NFL with the Pittsburgh Steelers. He broke the NFL record for the youngest player to 25,000 career receiving yards, so that's pretty awesome. Once again, a guy wanted the Chargers to draft, and they still could have drafted him, but nobody listens to me. Did the new president at USC, Carol Folt, there was a report that everybody's saying Urban Meyer's the most likely guy to be the next USC head coach, but he's working for Fox Sports right now as an analyst, but I don't think so, even before this came out, but even she says she's not looking at him to become that just because of his past and how his final year at Ohio State where he kind of looked over the fact that there was some marital issues and domestic violence with one of his coaches there and he didn't really do anything about it. He kind of just tried to sweep it under the rug and try to focus on the football when really you got to focus on more important things when it comes to domestic violence and like that no matter whether you're involved or you're enabling the people that you're involved with. So I think personally I wouldn't mind him being an athletic director just because he was a more responsibility than just being on the football and plus he's had health issues worrying about being a football head coach anyways which is why I wouldn't want him as a USC football coach especially the way they are now it would help recruiting but I just don't think he's gonna last that long anyways as the head coach at USC just my opinion then actually today <clears throat> for the Utah game since Fox Sports is covering it and Reggie Bush is now part of that college football team it will actually be the first time that USC supposedly or that Reggie Bush has supposedly been back at USC and on the campus since the whole allegation of his family taking money while he was there and stuff which never got proven and of course they still took away his Heisman which sucks but they should do a big old ceremony of, of giving it back to him and everything like that, the NCAA, because they freaking suck. But with all these Clay Helton rumors and everything like that of maybe him getting fired soon, and ex-NFL coach and ex-actually USC alumni Jack Del Rio, who's more famous for being the coach of the Jaguars and recently of the Oakland Raiders, he says he would be interested in the job even though he says he's not trying to force Clay Helen out. I think he kind of is, but yeah, I don't I don't really like him. I didn't like him in the NFL, and I wouldn't like him because he's just too old to be recruiting anyways. That's why I think they should go for somebody better. And obviously, Clay Helen's future is just up in the air, as we already know that, and we've mentioned before. 
<clears throat> then Deion Bailey, an ex-USC player, had a statement about, yeah, they shouldn't be losing to BYU, even though they're a sneaky good team, but like when he was at USC, a lot of his guys, they won like 10 or 11 games that year, and there was only 40 some odd players there, but now there's like 80 something players on the USC team. So they really have no excuse, but that's just a different type of mentality. I would wish that Deion Bailey would leave their coach in them, but I don't know if he's still trying to make it in the NFL or not. And then Sam Darnold, last Monday night, he did. He was going to play for the New York Jets, ex-USC quarterback, but he was out with Mono, and apparently they found out it's going to be a few more weeks. I don't even know what Mono was. They kept saying it was like a thing you get when you're a younger kid, and somehow he got it. Just the bad luck of the Jets, especially when it comes to quarterbacks, which is funny, but... I don't know, hopefully he does get better soon. Then both Chris Steele and Elijah Griffin, two corners that I obviously were championing for to get to USC, and luckily they both were able to land at USC eventually from high school, and then they showed out, and they have been showing out pretty good with Griffin being in his second year and Steele being in his first. They've been doing really well. Another ex-cornerback for <coughs> USC, Isaiah Langley, was arrested for robbery charges, which kind of sucks, but I guess that's why he wasn't on the team in the first place. And then the California state, whatever, passed a bill allowing players to make money off their likeness. I think this is an obvious choice. I don't think you should pay them for playing football, maybe, but if they want to go out and make do a signing or do something, a commercial, whatever, local commercial, and they make money off of it, allow them to do it. Like, so just the way it is to make it a lot easier, but they could make it a lot easier too if they just pay them all a certain like a thousand dollars a month and the NCAA could afford it, but that's just me. Thanks for watching people like and subscribe, comment down below, let me know what y'all think, and good luck to USC tonight against Utah. Bye on.